All right, so we have another ILD case here. Here are the HRCT images. As we scroll through slowly, you'll see that there is peripheral and basal predominant pulmonary fibrosis characterized by reticulation, some mild traction bronchiolectasis changes, small little cysts in lung periphery. Someone might even quibble if maybe there's early subpleural honeycombing. If you look carefully at the CT pattern, you'll also notice that there are some secondary pulmonary lobules which look lower density than adjacent normal lung. So that's consistent with mosaic attenuation. Mosaic attenuation has its three-part differential diagnosis. As you know, so an infiltrative abnormality which spares adjacent secondary pulmonary lobules can give you mosaic attenuation. But more often than not, it's going to be due to air trapping, sometimes from small vessel disease, either from pulmonary hypertension or from chronic thromboembolic disease. So what do you do? You get an expiratory series. All HRCT studies, also known as ILD protocols at some centers, they should include expiratory series. And we'll see those areas of mosaic attenuation, those darker secondary pulmonary lobules, noted on the inspiratory CT, now are much more obvious relative to more normal lung. So normal lung on expiration, as you guys know, should turn more gray, as demonstrated here. Areas of air trapping will stay equally as black as they were on the inspiratory series. And so there's a lot of air trapping here. There's a ton of secondary pulmonary lobules, some of which are coalescing into each other, for example, here and here demonstrating these areas of air trapping. So this combination of air trapping superimposed on pulmonary fibrosis is suggestive of hypersensitivity pneumonitis. And so I will draw your attention to the recent guidelines paper on hypersensitivity pneumonitis. And obviously there is a radiology CT side or section for these guidelines. So the HP pattern on CT has been subdivided into non-fibrotic pattern and fibrotic pattern. Clearly here we have findings of pulmonary fibrosis, so we're in the, the fibrotic pattern section. And so of these three sections, and I'm not going to go into them in, in too much detail here, I encourage you to read them, I'll add a link to the bottom of this YouTube video where I have a short summary and high level points uh, via a Twitter thread, uh, go ahead uh, and click on that if you want to learn more about this. Uh, so you can refer to that if you'd like, but I'm not going to go into detail in this video. But if we look at these, the pattern that it's most consistent with this particular CT is actually compatible with HP because we have findings of pulmonary fibrosis, which in terms of distribution is not highly suggestive of hypersensitivity pneumonitis. The Again, the distribution of fibrosis in this case was peripheral and basal predominant. There are clearly signs of small airway disease presenting with significant air trapping. So this would be a compatible with the HP pattern. So how do you diagnose HP? Just a reminder, we don't do it with pathology. We don't do it with imaging. We don't do it just with a clinical workup. It's a combination. Really, it should be done in the setting of multidisciplinary discussion where you have the input of a pulmonologist, radiologist, and if necessary, a pathologist. So we are moving away from getting surgical lung biopsies in many of our ILD patients, especially ones that have frank pulmonary fibrosis, given the morbidity and mortality associated with surgical lung biopsy in these patients. And so very proud to say, very happy to say that HRCT is central, if not at the top, maybe that's best way, better way to put it, it's at the top of the diagnostic pathway for hypersensitivity pneumonitis. This patient we would call it compatible with HP pattern. And then presumably the patient has exposure, positive exposure history. And so if they have a compatible with HP CT pattern and they have a positive exposure history, then you can make a diagnosis of HP. Sometimes low confidence, but still a presumptive diagnosis of HP all the way to def definite depending on what other concomitant laboratory values you have.